It's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Skincare Nerd, and Professional Sunscreen Guinea Pig. Today I'm going to be talking about whether you need to wear sunscreen indoors. Since most of us are staying indoors, I've had a lot of people ask me whether or not they need to still wear sunscreen. And I personally haven't been wearing sunscreen a lot indoors, even though I am a sunscreen nerd who owns all of the sunscreens. So do you need to wear sunscreen indoors? The answer is, it depends. I know, I know, no one likes hearing that, we all just want to know if it's a yes or a no. But that's just not how reality works, and we all already know this. If I'm in the dark in a windowless basement, of course it's a no. If I'm under a netting dome in the middle of summer in Australia, of course it's a yes. So today I'm going to break down the reasons why you may or may not need a sunscreen indoors from a scientific perspective, so you can work out what's best for your situation. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. First, let's quickly run through the basics of what the point of sunscreen is. Sunscreen's main job is to cut down how much UV reaches your skin. Sunscreens have an SPF rating, which mostly measures how much UVB protection you're getting. These shorter wavelengths generally cause you to burn, and they're the wavelengths most strongly associated with skin cancer. They don't go as deep into your skin, but they still cause your skin to age faster. There's also UVA, which are longer wavelengths. These burn less, but they cause prolonged tanning. They contribute to melanoma, skin aging, and hyperpigmentation. The broad spectrum or UVA ratings on sunscreens tell you how much UVA protection you're getting. One of the problems with this is most of the studies done on UV have been done on people with white skin. We'll come back to this point later. Some people have also asked about light from screens, particularly blue light. Sunscreen will not protect you against blue light, not even mineral sunscreens. Your screens also don't produce anywhere near enough blue light to make a difference. If you want to know more about blue light, I've done a couple of videos on that, I'll link them below. So back to UV. UV is bad, so sunscreen is good. But there are two big variables that change whether or not wearing sunscreen is good for your situation. How much UV you're exposed to, and how susceptible your skin is to UV damage. First, let's talk about how much UV you're exposed to when you're inside. There are two types of ways you can be exposed to UV from the sun. Direct exposure is when the sun is shining directly on you. When you're in the sun, you have direct exposure. When you're in the shade, you have no direct exposure. Diffuse exposure is when the sun isn't shining directly on you. Basically, the sun's UV is bounced onto you by either air molecules high up in the sky or objects around you. This also happens with visible light, and that's why you can see objects that are in the shade. Shorter wavelengths get diffused more, so there's more diffuse UV around than there is diffuse visible light. Obviously, there's more of both types of UV when you're outside compared to inside. That's because when you're indoors, there are things in between you and the sun and the sky. Firstly, there are solid walls that block out direct UV if you're in the shade. But when you're in the shade, you can still get diffuse UV. So how can we estimate how much diffuse UV we're getting? This is actually quite tricky. There are lots of different factors that change the ratio of direct to diffuse UV. Things like height of the sun, wavelength, altitude. I read a bunch of papers and I got really lost in the calculations. I had a great time researching this video. I'm going to use 60% diffuse, 40% direct as a rough estimate on the higher end of the scale. To estimate how much diffuse UV you're getting, you can use something called sky view. Basically, if you're standing in the middle of a field, you're exposed to the inside of a dome of sky. That's 100% exposure to diffuse UV. If there's stuff blocking your view of the sky, trees, buildings, walls, then you get less sky view and less diffuse UV. That's why the distance from the window matters. My window is about 1.6 by 1.2 meters. To work out my sky view, since it's around head height, I'm going to approximate it as a rectangle. The further away you are from the window, the more accurate this is. If you're sitting in the window and there's no trees or buildings, then you're getting about 50% sky view so roughly 50% of the diffuse UV. If you're further back from the window, then the portion of your dome, that sky, is going to be smaller. You can see that it decreases exponentially. 
For example, in my room, I sit three meters away from the window, so I get no direct UV. And I would get about 3% diffuse UV from the sky. But I also have trees, houses, blinds, blocking out parts of the sky. So only about 11% of the sky in the window is actually visible. The UV reflected by these objects is usually less than 10%, so I'm ignoring it. That gives me 0.33% sky view, which means I'm getting 1 300th of the diffuse UV compared to being in the open, and 1 500th of the total UV compared to being in the open. Even if I was only 1 meter away from the window, that's less than 2% sky view. I'm getting about 1% of the amount of total UV compared to being in the open. But there's usually another thing between us and the sun, and that is glass. Normal window glass usually blocks all of the UVB from getting through, but only about a quarter to a third of UVA. So in my particular situation, I'm going to get none of the UVB and only 1 500th of the UVA compared to sitting outside in the open. But the amount of UV that you get out in the open also changes. UV levels depend on where you live, the time of day, and the time of year. You might have heard of the UV index. This tells you how much erythemal or sunburn causing UV you're getting in a particular location at a particular time. You can look this up for your city. In Sydney, for example, you get a maximum of 12 in the middle of summer and a max of two in the middle of winter. You can use this to get an estimate of your UVA levels. There is a myth that UVA levels don't change much throughout the day or throughout the year. That is a myth, they do. They just don't change quite as much as UVB does. You can see on these graphs that UVA, the red line, still peaks in the middle of the day and in the middle of summer. The UV index is the best way to work out how much UV you have in your area. So once you work out roughly how much UV you're getting, you can work out what's best for your situation. Not everyone needs to wear sunscreen every day. I know it's a common saying in skincare circles that you need to wear sunscreen every day, but this is not true for everyone. There are benefits to UV exposure, which I talked about in my SPF myths video. Our body produces vitamin D after UVB exposure and nitric oxide after UVA exposure. So in many countries, including the UK and Australia, which is the skin cancer capital of the world, health authorities actually don't recommend that you wear sunscreen every day, even if you go outside. The Australian guidelines base this on the UV index. If the maximum UV on a particular day is three or above, they recommend wearing sunscreen. But if it's below three, they recommend not wearing sunscreen and intentionally trying to get some sun exposure. You don't get much UVB through glass, so the vitamin D benefits aren't there, but it isn't a blanket rule that you have to wear sunscreen every day. There's also a racial bias in sunscreen studies. Like in pretty much every other area of health, the vast majority of studies have been done on white people who are melanin deprived. Melanin is skin pigment which acts as a natural sunscreen. Not really enough to hang out on the beach without sunscreen, but enough to protect you from some incidental exposure. So the benefits of wearing sunscreen for preventing cancer and skin aging is going to be lower for people with darker skin. On the flip side, UVA does tend to cause more pigmentation in dark skin. This is more of an aesthetic thing than a serious health issue, so whether or not you still need UVA protection indoors really depends on how much you care about pigmentation. You might also be using skincare that increases your sensitivity to UV, like alpha hydroxy acids. And if you're using expensive anti-aging skincare, then it might be worth protecting yourself to maximize your results. You might also have a special condition that means you have to care a lot more about UV exposure, like if you have a photosensitive disease or a family history of skin cancer. So all of these factors are going to influence your choice. There are also some downsides to sunscreen. The obvious one is cost. You also have to spend time and effort applying the sunscreen. And in a lot of people like me, wearing sunscreen can cause clogged pores. And there are also health concerns about wearing sunscreen. These health concerns are usually really small if you're going outside, the benefits greatly outweigh the risks. But if you're exposed to only a tiny amount of UV, then these health concerns, combined with all of the other drawbacks of wearing sunscreen, might tip the scales towards you not wearing sunscreen. There's actually a really well-known example that illustrates the difference between diffuse indoor and direct indoor exposure. It's this truck driver who drove for 28 years with the windows closed. Sun struck this side directly, but the other side only got diffuse exposure through the side windows, which are similar to window glass. There is a huge difference between the two sides. I think it goes to show that direct UVA exposure indoors is probably worth worrying about, but 
Diffuse indoor UVA really depends on your situation. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into sunscreen science. If you did, you can like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at labmuffinbeautyscience and check out my blog labmuffin.com. See you next time to nerd out more about the science behind beauty products.